three about how my boyfriend proposed to another girl right in front of me. I know this is late, but better late than ever. So like I said, we left, I went back to her house and my boyfriend has the audacity to text me, I'll just meet you guys at the airport. So my best friend's like, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna go beat him up? Of course I said no. So I told her and her boyfriend to just go to the airport while I figured out what I was gonna do and to not say a word, which was hard for my best friend because she was confrontational as fuck. So I texted my boyfriend saying that I was sick and I just wasn't gonna go to the Bahamas with them. When in reality, I was packing up our whole house, leaving him with only his clothes and his shoes. So I put all the stuff in storage and I just decided to move back to my mom's house. And yes, this was in a span of a few days. So the whole time that he was gone, I was acting like everything was okay. On the last day of the trip, I sent him a text saying that I knew about everything. And I said I never wanted to hear from him again and I never wanted him to see the kids again. And he took that quite literally. I never got a text back. Well, four months after all this happened, I soon find out that he got a new house in North Carolina with his new wife and they have a daughter on the way. Story time about how my bank might have ruined my chances of going to an Olivia Rodrigo concert. So a little background information, in December I got tickets to Olivia's concert. I thought it would be the perfect Christmas gift for my sister and I to go to California and go to her concert. And I got two floor seats. So I was super excited when I gave her the tickets. We were both like screaming, you know, that we were going to be going to a concert. We had the best seats. Well, knowing that I had the tickets, I hadn't checked on them for a few months. And this concert is on May 20th of 2022. Well, a few days ago, I was going on Ticketmaster to check the tickets. And it said that they had been voided. And I had no idea why. So I was frantically trying to figure out what the hell had happened to my tickets. And I didn't want my sister thinking, oh my god, like she really didn't get the tickets. So I was sending emails with Ticketmaster. And they said that somebody had filed a dispute. If you don't know what that means, that means somebody was like, hey, that's my money, I'm taking it back. Like for part two. Part two about why I might not be allowed to go to an Olivia Rodrigo concert. So like I said, pretty much somebody was like, hey, I want my money back and the tickets were no longer there. Mind you, I was already charged in December and now it's April. So I call my bank and I'm like, hey, like, what the fuck is going on? My money is missing. Um, These people say they don't have it, aka Ticketmaster. And they're like, oh my god, like, we're so sorry. We thought that it was like a fraudulent charge, so we just disputed it. So now, of course, I'm extremely pissed off and upset. So then when they realized they fucked up, they were like, okay, we'll give the money back to them. That's completely fine. And then I called Ticketmaster and I talked to somebody. They said, that's fine. Just let them know at the door that there was a mix up. And I'm like, okay, but they're not just going to believe me. So can you send me an email saying that's what happened? And right after that, they hung up the call. And I've been trying to get a hold of Ticketmaster ever since. And they haven't been answering. So go check your tickets and please tag Ticketmaster. Story time about how my aunt kidnapped my dog. So a little background information. I was 14 and in eighth grade. I had a four-month-old puppy that I would take care of because since I wanted the dog, my parents were like, you have to take care of him, blah, 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 blah. So I put him in the crate, went to school, came home, thought everything was good until my dog is missing. So now I'm like, what the fuck? Because it's literally a four month old puppy. Anyways, I searched around the house to see if he maybe escaped or he was hiding under the beds or something, but he was nowhere to be found. So I asked the neighbors to keep a lookout for him and even put up missing posters everywhere. And when my parents got home, I told them the situation and they were like, oh, honey, he probably ran away, but he'll probably be back tonight. Um, yeah, fast forward five hours, he still wasn't home. So my dad was like, go to sleep. He'll be back in the morning. Um, so I went to sleep or I tried, but then I couldn't sleep. So I got up and got some melatonin. Like for part two. Part two about how my aunt kidnapped my dog. So like I said, my dad was like, go to sleep. And I went to try to go to sleep, but I couldn't because my dog was freaking missing. So I go downstairs to get some melatonin. When I hear my dad talking shit on the phone to my aunt, he was talking about something with the dog. But my dumb ass starts walking across the floor and all of a sudden the floor creaks. So I run upstairs, get back into bed and go to sleep. So the next day after school, I tell my dad I'm going to go to my aunt's house because she didn't live too far away. And I thought, OK, well, maybe she seen him run around her neighborhood, whatever. And he was like super off about it at first. But he was like, fine, whatever. Go to your aunt's house. So I get to her house and I walk in and I hear dogs barking. Um, one dog because she didn't have any fucking dogs. And I walk over to the backyard and what do you know, my puppy is sitting in her fucking backyard. So I brought my dog home and told my dad and he got really mad. It turns out he didn't even want the dog in the first place. So he gave her to my aunt. He apologized and we're good now, but 
Here we go with another toxic best friend story time. So a little background information. So a couple of years ago, I became best friends with this one girl who we're going to call Sammy. Every year, her family would go on a camping trip, and every year, I couldn't go. Something would always come up, even if it was last minute. Well, this year, finally, nothing was standing in the way, so I could go on this freaking camping trip. And we had literally been planning this for like six months. So this plan was, we would go up there in the afternoon, after I was done with work, and after she was done with school. Well, then she calls me and she asks me if I can call off work and go up a day early with her. And I told her, no, I can't do that. I already took off a bunch of time because I was sick and for my sister's wedding. So I need the money. So after I tell her I can't go up on Thursday, I would rather go on Friday, like we said. She responds with, well, we're going on Thursday and either you can take the day off and join or not. And then I told her, I'm not driving when the whole plan was for you to drive. Like for part, part two about my extremely toxic best friend. So like I said, she tried to talk me into taking off work so that way we could go up on Thursday, but I told her no, I would rather stick with the plan and go up Friday. And then she says, um, well, you can do that, but we're all going up on Thursday, so you're gonna have to find your own ride. And then I told her, I'm not driving up there. I don't know this place. So at that point, I was like, fuck it. If they leave without me, they live without me. I do not care at this point. And I pretty much said that. If you want to go without me, then go without me. And she called me and she was like, you're being extremely rude. A little background information on Sammy. She was a super selfish, self-centered person. And she has like only child syndrome. Every time we hung out, we had to do what she wanted to do. I was super annoyed about this because I had already planned for this vacation. Meaning I took the time off work. I rearranged my whole schedule. And now I don't really know if I want to be friends with her. What do you guys think? Story time about how my best friend was obsessed with me. And I'm not saying obsessed as in, oh my god, like, you know, she does her hair like me. No, I'm saying in a creepy way. So a little background information. I was 14 and it was the summer before I was going into high school. And I had this best friend who we're going to call Madison. Now, I met Madison like a month before school ended. She was one of those kids that nobody really liked and nobody wanted to be near. But we were partnered up in this one class and she's actually really funny. So since summer just started, I invited her over to have a sleepover at my house. Everything went well, we were swimming, we watched movies, but my house was in a really wooded area, so if you had certain phone carriers, you wouldn't get any reception. So she asked if she could use my iPad to text her dad, and it was like 11 o'clock at night, so I let her use it, and then we went to sleep. Well, I woke up around 3 in the morning because my phone kept going off, like for part 2. Part two about how my best friend was obsessed with me in a creepy way. So like I said, I woke up at three in the morning because my phone kept going off and it wasn't dinging or anything. It was just a light flashing when it would go off and on. So I look around for Madison and then I see my bathroom light is on, but the door is shut. So I just brush it off and I go on my phone and I see a bunch of text messages that were sent from me, but they weren't sent from me. Like obviously somebody had went on my iPad and started sending people messages. So I look at these messages and it's all texting Madison. And I kid you not, it's literally pictures of me while I'm sleeping that she sent to herself. Like there was a picture of my hair, a picture of one of my birthmarks. And then on her side of the nightstand, there was literally a lock of my hair. Like she cut my hair off and it was in a Ziploc bag. So at this point, I'm actually really creeped out and I go and tell my mom. And my mom talked to her mom and apparently she's done this story time about how I got my ex toxic best friend jumped. So a little background information. I was 16 and a sophomore in high school. And like any of these toxic best friend story times, she was super jealous of me for literally no reason. She would literally try to be better than me in everything. Like when I did a sport or a club, she would join immediately right after. And it wasn't a, oh, I'm going to join my best friend. No, it was, I'm going to join so that way I can show her that I'm better than her. For example, in sixth grade, I was captain on the volleyball team and she decided that she was going to try out her sophomore year. She played it off as if she just wanted to try it out, but then I got announced captain and she was pissed off when she heard that. She literally blocked me on everything. And she came from a super wealthy family, so she was used to getting whatever she wanted. And my whole friend group would literally tell me, you need to stop being friends with her. She's toxic. She's this. She's that. The only thing that stopped me from being friends with her was the blackmail. Like for part two about how I got my toxic ex-best friend jumped. 
So like I said, the only thing that was stopping me from not being her friend was the blackmail that she had. Every time that I pissed her off or even just randomly, she would be like, oh, I'm going to send this out. I'm going to expose you. She was just overall a shitty friend. So I had an exposing account on Instagram where I would expose people in my class. It got banned, but she DM'd the account, the blackmail. Little did she know it was literally me who was running it. Obviously, I didn't post it, but I showed one of my friends. And we kind of made a plan to get rid of the blackmail. So my birthday was coming up and I was going to Disney. And my mom said that I could invite two friends. Originally, I wasn't going to invite Tessa. But since I had this plan, I invited her and one of my other friends. On the third night, my friend and I decided to take our plan into action. Tessa was sleeping, so I went on her phone and I went and deleted all the pictures. Like for part three. Part two about how I stole my best friend's boyfriend. So like I said, she would talk shit about me all the time. And I only confronted her that one time. So she thought that we were all good. So the one day before class starts, she runs up to me. She's like, oh my God, you'll never guess what? I have a boyfriend. She's like, he's so cute, he's really popular, he's on the football team. And I was like, girl, whatever, nobody cares. Until I'm sitting in my first class of the day, and I remember that she made out with my boyfriend last year. I forgave her, of course. But because karma was taking a little bit too long, I figured I had to do something about it myself. So my plan was to hook up with her boyfriend. Do I feel bad about it? Absolutely not. So I went to my school's football game, and guess who I saw? My best friend's boyfriend. She couldn't make it that night. She had something to do, so I had him all to myself. So I went up to him. I started flirting with him, and I was like, oh, you should break up with your girlfriend and date me instead. But then he was like, I thought you guys were best friends, and I would never date you. Like for part... <laughs>
about how my best friend waxed off my eyebrow in my sleep, so I cut her hair. So like I said, nobody wants to sleep for the rest of the night. I acted like it was okay because I was plotting in my head that I was going to cut one of their fucking ponytails off. So I go over to their house next week. And every single day that week, they were telling me how good my drawn-on eyebrow looked. Um, It didn't actually look good. And none of my hairs were growing back. So around 12 o'clock, all of us are ready to go to bed. I'm laying down pretending that I'm sleeping. And they think I'm sleeping, so they're over there talking shit about me on her bed. Ashley's bed. I wasn't sure which one's eyebrow I should rip off because the one ripped off my eyebrow, but then the other one put the wax on my eyebrow. They were like, she's sleeping. I don't think she's going to do anything. She doesn't even have the balls to do anything. So around four in the morning, everybody is dead asleep. I get up and Ashley had her hair in a ponytail. So that was easy enough. I grabbed a pair of scissors out of my book bag and I cut her hair off. Story time about the girl who 